experiences that I've had in the last 40 years, in terms of what helps me now, actually having been a parent, I still am a parent, but having had children go through school, as well as having been a teacher, has been enormously valuable, because you've been at both cold faces, so to speak. And of my four children, one is extremely dyslexic and one is mildly. And I do find at least I know what parents feel like when they are sitting there and they are frantic about their seven-year-old who they can't get to do homework and is just not, not learning to read. I've been there, done that, and I'm stretched with tissues too. Um, but I think one of the things that we know as parents is how extraordinarily different children can be, even within one family. You know, one is highly articulate, started talking at one and a half, another doesn't talk to their two, has terrible difficulty, you know, finding the word, could you could pass me the, the what's it, can't remember their friends' names. Some are terribly organised and tell you what to do and know where you put things. And others, you have to kind of wheel them out of the house, picking up their bag, putting their clothes on them as they go. But just as there are obvious differences at home, we all know that there are children who have quite a lot of differences in the way they learn in school. And it is those children who get to school and who find that they can't settle down or they can't write easily and get frustrated or they have difficulty learning to read or they might be fine initially and then hit a barrier at, at eight or nine when the curriculum gets harder when suddenly they can't keep up or indeed at 13. And it's those are the children who basically come to me and I assess. So what I'm going to talk about this evening is the process that I go through. Uh, what I would really like to say is that there are many forms of assessment out there. What I do now in private practice with my particular clientele is not necessarily the kind of assessment I might have done when I worked for Hammersmith Education Authority. So when I'm talking about assessment, bear in mind this is what I do, and it's a model which is used a uh, fairly similar model by many people who are working um, independently as psychologists, but n none of us will be doing it exactly the same, but I and my two associates tend to work this way. So, what I always want parents to understand is that assessment is, the, is not an end in itself. It's really the beginning, and hopefully what the important thing about assessment is that when it's done, you are helping the parents uh, see where to go next with a particular child, what ought they to focus on, and also, hopefully, the information that we send back to schools is a little bit valuable there, or hopefully the added understanding of the child's strengths and weaknesses is useful within the school context. So the key thing about assessment is really threefold. One, it's very important to define the problem. What is it that parents or school are actually worried about? Because um, it's always important to pay attention to parents' concerns because that's what they want to have addressed. Then the key thing is obviously trying to identify any underlying difficulties which might be causing uh, difficulties within school. And then of course the key thing is solutions. Uh, what should everybody be doing next? So that's the threefold bit. But assessments are a little bit grey in the sense that it's not like going, taking your child to the doctor to have mumps or measles identified. And I very much dislike using the word diagnosed when it comes to, to um, difficulties such as dyslexia and dyspraxia because I don't see it as a kind of... I don't particularly like using a medical model because it it kind of makes the problem all in the child. Whereas I think the important thing is looking at the bigger context. So before, I know that you're probably interested in knowing about the tests and talking about those, but I would like just to go around the bigger picture, the wider context, that for me is amazingly important to understand. And I'll just give you a slightly odd example uh, of why, why it's important to know as much as you can about the child. Uh, I saw a child who was between the age of three and four, it was a few years ago, and the parents were concerned about this child's language development. He was brought to see me by his English nanny, and he was quite chirpy, and he kept up quite a big babble of kind of gobbledygook, really. 
And I took him off to my office and we got on the floor and we got some toys out to play with and I talked and he chatted back. And, I looked, and, and what I had also discovered talking to the nanny was that she'd only been caring for him for two weeks. This child lived in quite a remote area at the end of a long drive. His parents were both extremely busy and he didn't go to nursery. But guess what? His au pair, who just left two years, two weeks before, was Romanian. <laughs> I, look. I don't know whether this child speaking fluent Romanian or has a really awful language disorder. <laughs> so it's rather a, an extreme example of why you need to have the full context. Um, so the areas that I like to really know about are um, the, med the, uh, the physical things. Can a child see? Um, have they had their eyes tested? Have they been to an orthoptist? Did anybody ask them if they actually see the letters moving along the page? Because for those children, if it's normal, it's, they don't know if it's what's always happened, they don't know it's abnormal. So there's vision needs checking. Hearing needs checking. Um, can they hear? Um, then there are whole aspects of health. If they're not feeling well, they're not going to be lively, they're not going to be paying attention. Um, Physical coordination. I like to know about them, whether they whether they can use a knife and fork, whether they're beginning to do. I, I'm when I say these things, it's obviously the examples will depend on people come for assessments of all ages. I, I'm probably talking about nature, mm. but so knowing whether they've had difficulty um, with left and right with fine motor skills is important. Similarly, it's nice to get some information from parents about their gross motor skills. Did they learn to throw and catch? Um, then there is um, language, very important. When do they start learning to talk? Uh, are they articulate? Are they, do they have difficulty um, learning the days of the weeks, months of the year? Um, do they have difficulty finding words, you know, the struggling to express themselves? What are they like socially? Can they communicate easily with their friends? Um, are they rather withdrawn? I mean, how, do, how does all that work out? Do they have a sense of humour? Can they pick up on jokes? Uh, do they get nuance? Um, so we've got all those things about language are important. Um, experience. Uh, did the child attend um, a French-speaking school to the age of six with no English? Are they bilingual? What's the first language at home? Um, uh, did they did they miss school? And then there are the, the other things that you know, other experiences which might make children actually quite anxious and therefore less available for learning. And um, has the dog died? Has one of the parents had a, a serious illness? So we, I think that probably has gone around all the things which I feel it's very important to know if the assessment is going to be how they do on the test that I give them are actually going to be seen within the bigger context of their life, what they bring to the situation when they're in school. And in order to find out the information that I've just um, been talking about, I always ask parents to complete a family questionnaire before they come to see, they send it to me ahead of time. And if they give permission, I also ask um, the school to fill in uh, quite a short questionnaire because it's also very important for me to know actually how the school is perceiving this child. Because parents in school very often don't have exactly the same uh, image. But, it's some, but the children can be very different at home in school. And it can be an eye-opener having your child at school. I had a year at school with my youngest son. <laughs> <laughs> and I loved it because we set off and we went, I was teaching in a dreadful primary school under the, he, uh, the flight path that he threw. But I learned a lot about him. And he was in the other half of my class. I had, you know, he was eight and nine. And apart from the fact I got him very upset when I called him out at Rounders. You have to discriminate very unfairly if you're teaching in the same school as your child. It was, I, would, I then had a very clear idea of how tough the classroom was for him, particularly on the days when there was a supply teacher and I'd go and say, are you doing okay, do you need any help? And she said, it's all right, there's always one, I put him in the corner. <laughs> I said, yes, it's mine. <laughs> um, 
But anyway, the, uh, getting information from home and school is very helpful. Uh, and so, that in fact, having the questions that I use are structured in such a way that they pick up on all the, the little hints and uh, signs that you might have if a child is going to be dyslexic, dyspraxic, have attention deficit disorder, or um, uh, autistic spectrum di difficulties. It's not that I'm permanently looking for these, but it's nice to have an idea of kind of what you've got your antennae watching out for. So... Now we get into the assessment. <laughs> um, so the children come to see, are uh, brought to me, and obviously if they're young, uh, I try and uh, we will try and go and do a school visit. But by and large, the children or the, the young people that we assess are aged between about the age of age of 16 and 18, and I do sometimes see students uh, anything up to 24, 25, and the occasional adult, but mainly. If there's a kind of normal distribution, I should think the bulk of children that are assessed are between 8 and 14. So the children arrive, and really, uh, one can't help but observe them from the minute they come in through the door. And it's like the ones who shoot past you, trampling on your feet, rush across uh, the room, pick up the clock, turn it upside down, and you're thinking, oh, I'm going to get us such a busy afternoon keeping this child happy. But it... All those little things add up to the picture. Anyway, so once I've we've explained what's going to happen, I go off with the child and I spend about two hours. And I look at reading, writing, spelling, maths, and go through an IQ test. And I have learnt it is important not to take shortcuts. 